On today's show, the Thrustmaster T128 Force Feedback Racing. I'm Sean Cole, this is the Simpit, and today we're here to take a look at the Thrustmaster T128 Racing Wheel Kit. The T128 goes for $199 and gives racers who are starting out everything they need to be racing. This includes a force feedback steering wheel along with a pedal set that includes a gas and brake pedal. The T128 is compatible with both the PC and Xbox systems. They also make an identical model for the PlayStation with the same features and the same price. The Thrustmaster T128 is one of the least expensive force feedback wheels on the market. At under $200, it is the only wheel of the big three manufacturers, Logitech, Fnatic, and Thrustmaster, to come in at under $200. In fact, looking at Logitech's offerings, their least expensive wheel would be a G920 at $299, or anything from Fnatic that would be more like $700 for a full starter kit at this point. So kudos to Thrustmaster for keeping an eye on the beginning sim racing market. So what do you get for your $200 with a T128? Well, it starts off with the wheelbase itself, which is a little bit plain, other than the silver ring around its front. The wheelbase, whose shape is clearly influenced by the direct drive wheel market, is fairly small and lightweight. It's pretty much all plastic, but feels pretty solid considering. On the top side of the base is a series of holes for venting and a small Thrustmaster logo towards the front. The bottom side is where all the wiring connections are made, the power, the pedals, and to the PC. There are channels for each of these wires, along with a Velcro strap to keep it tidy. The bottom side is where the dual foot clamp bolts on with its hand crankable handle. This clamp is also made of plastic and will accommodate desks up to 5.5 centimeters thick. Inside of that black case is a belt and gearbox force feedback delivery system with an adjustable rotation of up to 900 degrees. The steering wheel, which is permanently attached to the base, is a little bit more exciting. It is also entirely made of plastic, and that includes the wheel rim itself. Like the base, the rim feels fairly solid considering its construction, and more resistant to flex and overgripping than I expected. The wheel has a minor grip texture embedded into it to prevent it from being too slippery. The rim is very small, coming in at only 260 millimeters wide and about 30 millimeters thick or round. There are nine screws that hold the front and back side of the rim together, including one on the red center stripe. At the center of the wheel rim is a Thrustmaster logo badge that is surrounded by what are all of the typical Xbox type controls or buttons, starting with the five surrounding the badge, including the Xbox button at the bottom. Extending into the left and right legs of the tri-spoke shape are the directional pad on the left and the Y, B, A, and X buttons on the right. On the top of both spokes are larger rectangular shaped buttons in red that Thrustmaster likes for a handbrake. And then on the bottom of those same spokes are two more rectangular buttons in black labeled as Xbox bumper buttons. There's a little bit of shape and style on the tri-spoke that gives the rim a certain amount of elegance for what it is. But to give it just a bit more pop, there's a four color, four segment RPM strip at the top of the center. The back side of the wheel rim has the permanently mounted, non-adjustable, and made of plastic paddle shifters. These paddles are a good shape and size and have a great magnetic paddle release which would fool you for a much higher end setup. Each one is marked with a plus or minus sign in case you forgot what they are mapped for. Now if you thought the overall wheel was small, well then the pedal set is downright miniature. Not the pedal faces themselves, but the entire pedal set. It is literally only 215 millimeters from one side of the pedals to the other. And the pedal faces are only 165 millimeters apart at their widest. That is not a lot of room for two feet. The pedal set is made almost entirely of plastic and has the typical shape of most pedal sets, just smaller. There's a texture printed into the heel plate area for grip and there are actually two holes that could be used for mounting them to a surface. The bottom side of the base is the hollowed out honeycomb pattern for reinforcement and has a channel on each side to allow the wiring to go out of the base. Each pedal arm is made of wide plastic that has a semi-stylish honeycomb shape for strength. In fact, much like the wheel rim, the pedal arms and the faces 
are stronger than I expected from such a delicate looking set. Overall, the pedal faces are large enough with the gas pedal being slightly thinner. Inside of the pedals are magnetic sensors that should last for a long time. Also included with the wheel set is a 48 watt power supply, an instruction sheet, and a one month free Xbox game pass. My approach when reviewing a wheel like this is to put myself in the mindset of its intended user, that being a starter or a beginner sim racer, and they likely don't even have a rig yet, which means the wheel is gonna be clamped to a desk, a TV tray, a card table, any table or surface that they can bolt it to, and unfortunately, they're probably just gonna throw the pedals on the ground. In these scenarios, I am pretty confident in the dual foot clamp. It is strong, it seems to have a good bite, and it worked out very well for me. Granted, if you yank on the wheel, I'm sure it would slip or slide or even come off, but within the intended range of the force feedback of this wheel, it's more than adequate. And with that five and a half centimeters of opening, it'll work on most desks. Now with the pedals, I had a completely different experience. For left foot braking, there was just no way I could brake with these pedals as is. They are too small and have no way of really gripping the ground and just push away too easily. So I then started just using one foot for both pedals and the other to hold the base on the ground. This was better, but it still twisted and moved away. For best performance, I ended up building up some blocks between the pedals and the wall, and this allowed me to use the pedals properly. In this scenario, it'd be very easy to take the wheel off the desk, grab the pedals, throw it in the closet, and have it out of the way when not being used. Now when looking to put it onto a rig or hard mount it, things get a little more difficult. There are no mounting options for the wheelbase and it would require a deck wide enough for that clamp which requires about 160 millimeters of distance. Then you would need some long bolts to go through those holes and to drill some holes in your rig. Now for PC users, you are going to want to download the latest drivers, which you can get from the Thrustmaster website at the support page. And with that, you can make some basic adjustments to the force feedback of the wheel. My tip is to turn the damper and spring to zero and let the game control the center spring as a starting point. Now let's talk about how this sub $200 entry level racing kit performed out on track. The Thrustmaster T128 is a fairly small racing wheel when comparing it to most other sim racing wheels on the market today. But then again, it is enormous when comparing it to using a controller. And lock to lock on a controller looks like this. And meanwhile, lock to lock with 900 degrees of rotation on a steering wheel looks like this. And that's an endless amount of precision difference. With that said, the T128 wheel is a quick turning wheel. The default settings from Thrustmaster had a bit more dampening on it than I liked, but when I put my settings on the wheel, it freed it up a bit more, gave better force feedback effects, and allowed it to turn a bit more freely. The wheel setup is pretty solid feeling. This includes the steering wheel itself, the base, and even the quick release. I was pleasantly surprised by how strong the wheel felt. The force feedback delivery was a bit on the light side. It's there, and there is no comparing this to a controller or a non-force feedback wheel, but it is very quiet in its delivery. I mean, I can definitely use it to help me with the oversteer and understeer conditions, but I have to listen or feel for it carefully. With that said, this wheel is very much alive compared to a non-force feedback wheel, and that allows me to demonstrate proper driving skills compared to those other options. Other effects like off-road rumble or locking up of the brake type vibrations are also there, but very slight compared to bigger, stronger wheels. The wheel's movement has a little bit of built-in friction that can be felt and heard as the internal gearbox combined with belts make a bit of a whirling noise when turned quickly. I did also find there to be a little bit of a force feedback dead zone at the center of the wheel when going straight. You can see the car react to movements at even a single degree of movement on the wheel, but it has about a five degree window before you feel the force feedback kick in. This only seems to happen when going straight and once the wheel is turned, the force feedback is one to one. The paddle shifters are the nicest I have felt at this price point. The magnetic release gives it a pro wheel feel and the plastic tabs are comfortable in my hands. They're also strong and really don't flex unless I pull on them too hard. 
One more thing to talk about on the wheel are the buttons themselves. Yes, they are the typical pattern and look of an Xbox controller, but they do have a bit more spring and snap to them than a plain controller and gave me enough controls to handle most racing scenarios. Focusing our attention on the pedals themselves, well, it's still hard for me to get over their miniature size. Even after backing the pedals and preventing as much movement as possible, the operation of these pedals was still a little bit more difficult than a larger set with more weight or heft to them. With that said, and working with what we got, I was impressed with the action and movement on these little pedals. The throttle has more throw than I would expect, and the resistance is smooth and consistent. I was also happily surprised to see a different resistance on the brake pedal. It is a much stronger spring, and that stronger spring on the brake definitely helped me with braking, and the pedal faces were large enough so that despite the overall small dimensions, there was enough room for each foot to be on the pedal at the same time, even in shoes. Even though I wouldn't call these pedal springs super lightweight, they are still best driven in socks. This allowed for a bit more precision due to lighter springs than higher end pedals. At first I laughed when I saw these pedals, but after using them, honestly, they worked a lot better than my expectations. So I think that tells you everything that you need to know about the Thrustmaster T128 racing wheel kit. Tells you how it performs out on track, but to point out the most important aspects of this review, let's go ahead and break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line. Starting off with the good, and that being, this is an affordable starter wheel, full kit. Good construction for sub $200 wheel set. Plug and play, just download software. RPM lights. Xbox compatibility. Shifters felt great, magnetic. Hall effect sensors, long lasting. Great for desktop users. Easy to set up and tear down. Adjustable rotation up to 900 degrees. And now on to the not so good. It is a very small pedal set. Almost entirely made of plastic. Wheel rim is hard. Wheel rim is small. No hard mounts, clamp only. And now on to the bottom line. I can actually tell you this, no BS. With this setup, I could actually win races. If I were to hard mount these pedals, if I was to get that wheel at the right angle, get my chair in approximately the right location, this setup is gonna perform very well for a starter wheel and surprised me a ton for being under $200. Now with that said, this is a starter wheel. This will take you off of a controller. This will let you skip a non-force feedback wheel for a reasonable price and it'll get you actually sim racing. But if you really, really enjoy sim racing, you're definitely going to upgrade from a wheel at this level. And I also think even for long time or avid or veteran sim racers that this makes a good second wheel option. Maybe you wanna get your kids into sim racing but you don't want them using your expensive kit. Or maybe you have friends who come over and they want to ride your rig but you don't want them to use your expensive kit. Here's a nice second option that you can let others race at your house on a desktop or even set them up on an Xbox. And if you live in an apartment or you race from your bedroom or you live in a dorm room where space is precious and you just can't have the luxury of a rig sitting in your room with a base this small, a wheel this small, pedal this small, it is about as easy as it gets for taking it off your rig, throwing it in the closet or under your bed to get it out of the way when you just can't have it out all of the time. And that's something that some people do need and you can't overlook that fact as well. So overall, this wheelbase, this whole setup really, really did kind of blow me away and, and really made me reassess what you can do with a starter kit. But I'm gonna tell you, Again, at that sub $200 price point, I think it's pretty hard to beat the Thrustmaster T128 when it comes to performance for that money. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. You can check out this wheel and other wheels at thrustmaster.com. Be sure to thumbs up this show if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to find out when our next video comes out. And most of all, thanks for watching. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.